invite me. Um, my name is uh, Noam. I'm an Israeli. I, uh, I live in Tel Aviv. Uh, I'm a journalist uh, for the past uh, 12 years. And for the recent two years, I've been blogging in English. I'm a journalist for uh, Hebrew publications, not for uh, English one. And, um, and recently, I became a bit more involved in uh, human rights activities and activities with the non-governmental organizations in Israel and civil society organizations. And uh, that's something I'm very passionate about. And uh, that's part of the stuff I blog about. And to begin with, like, what I want to say here is, uh, I'll tell you a bit about my background. Uh, when I uh, worked in my first paper, it was a local paper in Tel Aviv, about uh, 13 years ago, we only had uh, two computers out of two dozens who were connected to the internet. And they were used for uh, those weird reporters that would email their articles instead of faxing them or reading them over the phone. It was also a hassle to, to, to get the attachment and everything. And uh, internet was not a tool for a journalist back then. I guess everybody knows that, but it's sometimes hard to remember how new everything we talk about is. And two years later, um, Israel's largest daily, Yediot uh, Achronot, started um, a web division called Ynet, and uh, I was asked to join. Uh, it was 2000, April 2000, and I remember that when we used to call people to interview them, we used to explain them what's a news site on the internet is. Like, we didn't just say, I'm calling from Ynet. We say, I'm calling from Ynet, which is inter the internet division of Yediot Achronot, and that kind of made sense to them. And they wouldn't allow our reporters into press conferences and into sport matches because it wasn't considered serious writing on the internet. <laughs> and um, we, but in a very short time, we began feeling a shift. And it was quite exciting how, how fast things happen. And the first time we really felt it was during the second intifada, when there were suicide bombings in Israeli cities they saw the site, after, after one or two attacks, used to crash every time there was an attack. That was the first time we realized that people were turning to the internet to get their, their, their information, and not to the radio as they used to. And of course not to the newspaper and to, or to uh, national television, which takes a lot of time to react. So, by 2003 and 2004, Ynet became a real force in Israeli media, and today it's the most important internet and news site in Israel uh, that really dominates the news cycle. And uh, I moved in 2003 to Ma'ariv, which is a daily paper, a printed one, so I kind of moved back with, against the movement of technology. But, um, after, after a few years, we had a different revolution, another one, which is the social media, of course. And the social media, I think, more even than the internet, to begin with, more, more than with the first wave of internet sites, changed everything for journalists, for journalism, and for people who were involved with news in their life. Because how should I put it? The New York Times or Ynet is really a, a printed paper online, which is updated. But social media is something that we've never seen before. And blogs were always there. But only when we had the social tools, everything exploded. And our work and reporters considerably changed. Now, a lot of journalists are afraid from these changes. And a lot of politicians are afraid, and a lot of people are worried about the way changes are working and changes our society. But other people, and I think I'm part of them, are excited from the possibilities it gives us. 
and two years ago I started blogging. And I started blogging in English, which is something I never cons considered doing before, which is something that was never possible for me before. And uh, sure enough, people started reacting to this blog. I blogged about news, about human rights in Israel, and about politics, and people reacted. And I got in touch with a lot of people who dealt uh, with these questions, especially in the United States. A lot of bloggers here who deal with Israel, uh, progressive bloggers of, on the left here, or Jewish bloggers, uh, even on the right, we started exchanging emails. And another thing that was very interesting was the connection we started having with human rights organizations. Because for me, human rights organizations and civil society organizations and bloggers are kind of uh, a match which is, I don't know, natural. Because human rights organizations don't have access, usually good access to reporters on printed media. Because reporters prefer to talk to politicians, to government officials. And bloggers don't have access to government officials usually, and to decision makers. So the two kind of interact. So suddenly, I've been getting emails from people on Peace Now, and people on Bezalem, uh, and Rabbis for Human Rights, and this is, for example, how my, for example, how my connection with Rabbi for Human Rights began. And to sum it all up, uh, in the last year, there was a group of bloggers in Israel who were, was blogging in English about the same issues and we kind of got to know each other and we decided to form this uh, magazine which is called 972 and it's been running for uh, a few months and deals with uh, news and opinion from Israel from I think what is a very fresh perspective an on the ground one and one that can change the debate because think about if you had Going back to 13 years ago, when I started writing, if you had to understand the news about what's going on in Israel, you had one or two sources. You had, you know, the correspondence in Israel. You had CNN by then, but not much more. By now, you, had su you have such a variety. So, this generation, of American Jews, but not only Jews, I think will be much more informed and much more involved and can ask itself questions that were never raised before about Israeli politics. And I'm really happy to be part of that. And that's what I want to discuss here.